And when the party left office in 2008, Barbados was in a position yes. to weather the economic storm. Yes. If, only, if only the policies were adopted by our successors. But we know now they have been asleep. Speak. Number two priority. That jobs is our number three priority. The unemployment rate moved in those years from under 25% to 7.1%. Thank you. We maintain sustained growth in tourism and services. And these generated the foreign Exchange. When we left, we left them with sufficient foreign exchange to withstand any means from outside of our village. We now have to devise new means to afford new forms of support and protection to our enterprises, especially in the manufacturing and agricultural sector. New financial arrangements were created for each productive sector by which funds became available to carry out the restructuring and modernization required to deal with contemporary challenges. The Agricultural Development Plan Fund, the Small Hotels Fund, the Tourism Development Fund, Fund Access, the Enterprise Growth Fund, and yes, the Urban and Rural Development Fund. During Owen's term of office, Barbados made maximum use of the new telecommunications sector. This has seen us move into the third position in internet penetration in this hemisphere after Bermuda and Canada. Boeing's vision extended to the Caribbean. Under his guidance, the CMSE was enlightened. Little work was done before he assumed responsibility. I dare say, little if any work has been done since he ceased to be Prime Minister. In fact, CARICOM was mentioned by the present Prime Minister perhaps for the first time in nearly five years, about two weeks ago. <laughs> OE's efforts to address the HIV AIDS pandemic in Barbados and the success which has enjoyed were lauded by the United Nations and are a tribute to his leadership. His his initiatives to improve the management of our social security system and ensure its long-term viability is yet another of his outstanding achievements. You could have felt safe with OEM that your money was in the national insurance funds. These guys, these guys don't know what they're doing and where to invest. When you get back away, strengthen it again for me, son. I am, my, my father lived for 108 years, so I, I want to be sure when the time comes that there's a fun for all of you and for me. The country's performance under our party and under Owen Arthur's leadership attracted the attention of the United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan who described Barbados as a nation punching above its weight in the past. In fact, by the start of the year 2007, our party had won for Barbados, has pushed Barbados to the stage, where Barbados had won universal respect as the best managed small state in the United States. the end of October 2012, and we find ourselves on the veritable eve of a general election which will determine whether or not the electors of this country will permit the slide of the last four years and ten months to continue. There can be no doubt that despite the international 
recession, and Barbados' poor economic performance since the Democratic Labour Party came to office. We have worsened our situation by the vigilant leadership, the gross incompetence, the outstanding mismanagement which together have brought the people of Barbados, and not for the first time, to the brink of despair under the Democratic Labour Party. I am sure that the people of Barbados will, as they have done before, ask themselves a number of searching questions and find logical answers to those questions. For example, has the Democratic Labour Party in the past nearly five years managed our nation's affairs with a level of competence demanded in these times? No! To what extent have the failed policies of the Democratic Labour Party been responsible for the increasing level of crime and the social and economic malaise that have engulfed our island? What has the government done to give the people of Barbados, whether they are professionals, ordinary citizens, students, pensioners, business persons, or liberals, an opportunity? so that they feel secure in the pursuit of their dreams. Constituency councils, young people, qualified and unqualified, cannot find jobs. And this is the first time since 1994 that we have had such a high level of unemployment among our young men and women. Listen to them complain. Listen to them. We will get that youth vote this time. I want to say to the team, our team, that was introduced to us from this platform a while ago, that you are some of the best men and women that any political party can offer. Thank you.